हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू आवर यूट्यूब चैनल श्री रावतपुरा सरकार यूनिवर्सिटी दिस इज अदिति गिर गोस्वामी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फार्मेसी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ह्यूमन एनाटॉमी एंड फिजियोलॉजी लेट्स स्टार्ट विद व्हाट इज एनाटॉमी हियर इन दिस एनिमेशन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट ह्यूमन बॉडी ह्यूमन बॉडी इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ अ ह्यूमन बीइंग इट इज कंपोज्ड ऑफ मेनी डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ सेल्स we already discussed about cell in our previous video lecture cell is a basic structural and functional unit of life cells that together create tissues and subsequently organ system which functions together to carry out complex overall functions of human body now parts of human body human body involves anatomy that means study of the structure of the human body physiology involves the study of the functions of the human body histology is the study of microscopic structures of tissues embryology the branch of biology which deals with the study of embryos and their development human body comprises a head neck trunk which include thorax and abdomen arms and hands legs and feet which thoroughly called limbs this picture shown on the screen shows you different parts of the human body now we are going to discuss about anatomy what is anatomy anatomy is the branch of biology concerned with the study of the structures of the organism it is a science of the body structures and relationships among them anatomy is the natural science which deals with the structural organization of living things anatomy is divided into parts microscopic anatomy and microscopic anatomy microscopic anatomy is also called gross anatomy it is the examinations of the human body parts using your normal eye or else unaided eye sight you can examine any of your body part without using of microscope and microscopic anatomy involves the use of optical instruments in the body in the study of the tissue of various structures which known as histology now we're going to discuss about levels of organizations there are six levels of organizations the first one is chemical level which include subatomic particles like electron protons and neutrons atoms molecules and macromolecules the second one is cellular level in cellular level molecules combines to form a cell which is a basic structural and functional unit of life for example smooth muscles cardiac muscle cells etc third is tissue level after cell tissue is next level of organization in the human body group of cells are work together to perform a particular functions which are tissues a tissue is a group of connected cells that have a similar functions four basic type of human tissues are epithelial tissues mus muscles tissue nervous tissue connective tissues the fourth level is organ level an organ is a structure that consists of two or more different types of tissue group of tissues form an organ which have special functions and recognized shapes for example stomach liver skin heart lungs kidneys etc are the example of organ level is organ system level in organ system level human organs are organized into an organ system level an organ system level is a group of organs that works together to carry out a complex overall functions examples are skeletal system digestive system respiratory system etc the sixth one is and the last level of organization is organismal level 
the organismal level is the highest level of the organization it is the sum of total of all structural levels working together in short it is the whole human being or organism as a whole here in this picture you will see all the six levels of organizations how a subatomic particles become an atom and then molecule to macromolecules which shows the chemical level of organization then the next one is cellular level molecules combines to form a cell and a group of cells are combined to form a tissue which shows tissue level further group of tissues form an organ which represents organ level then human organs are organized into one organ system level and at last sum of total of all structural levels shows an organismal level which is the highest level of organization it is a human being or organism now we are going to discuss about organ systems the first one is integumentary system the integumentary system comprises the skin and its appendages acting to protect the body from various kinds of damages such as loss of water or damages from outside the next one is skeletal system the human skeleton is the internal framework of the human body it is composed of it is composed of around 270 bones at birth this total decreases to around 206 bones by adulthood after some bones after some bones get fused together the bone mass in the skeleton reaches maximum density around age 21 the next is muscular system the muscular system is an organ system consisting of skeletal smooth and cardiac muscles it permits movement of the body maintains posture and circulates blood throughout the body the muscular system in vertebrates are controlled through the nervous system although some muscles can be completely autonomous now cardiovascular system it can be thought of as the transport system of the human body this system has three main components the heart the blood vessels and the blood itself the heart is the system pump and the blood vessels are like the delivery routes blood can be thought of as a fluid which contains the oxygen and the nutrients the body needs and carries the wastes which need to be removed the following information describe the structure and functions of the heart and the cardiovascular system as whole next is lymphatic system the lymphatic system or lymphoid system is an organ system in vertebrates that is a part of the circulatory system and the immune system it is made up of a large network of lymphatic vessels lymphatic or lymphoid organs and lymphoid tissues the vessels carry a clear fluid called lymph the human circulatory system processes an average of 20 liters of blood per day through capillary filtration which removes plasma from the blood roughly 17 liters of the filtered plasma is reabsorbed directly directly into the blood vessels while the remaining 3 liters remain in the interstitial fluid one of the main functions of the lymphatic system is to provide an accessory return route to the blood for the surplus 3 liters now now digestive system the human digestive system consists of the gastrointestinal tract plus the accessory organ of digestion digestion involves the breakdown of food into smaller and smaller components until they can be absorbed and assimilated into body the next one is respiratory system respiratory system is a biological system consisting of specific organs and structures used for gas exchange in an animals and plants the anatomy and physiology that makes this happens varies greatly depending on the size of the organism 
the environment in which it lives and its evolutionary history. The next one is urinary system. Urinary system also known as the renal system or urinary tract consists of the kidneys, ureters, bladders and the urethra. The purpose of the urinary system is to eliminate waste from the body, regulate blood volume and blood pressure control levels of electrolytes and metabolites and regulate blood pH. And the last one is system. The reproductive system of an organism also known as the genital system. It is the biological system made up of all the anatomical organs involved in sexual reproduction. Many non-living substances such as fluid, hormones and pheromones are also important accessory to the reproductive system. There are two types of reproductive system. The one is male reproductive system. And another is female reproductive system. Characteristics of life. Basic life processes. All living organisms have certain characteristics that distinguish them from non-living forms. The first one is organization. At all level of organizational scheme, there is a division of labor. Each component has its own job to perform in cooperation with others, even a single cell. If it is loses, its integrity or organization will die. Next is metabolism. It is the sum of all the chemical processes that occurs in the body and are of two types, catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism, the breakdown of complex chemical substances into simpler components, example digestion of protein into amino acids. Anabolism, the building of of complex chemical substances from smaller simple components. Example, use of amino acids to build new proteins in the body. Next, responsiveness. It is the body's ability to detect and respond to changes in the internal and external environment. Example, withdrawing of hand when pricked by a needle. Nerve cells respond by generating electrical signals called nerve impulses. Muscles respond by contracting, generate force to move body parts. Next is movements. It includes motions of the whole body, many types of move movements within the body, cellular level, organ level, etc. Reproduction. It refers either to the formation of new cells or to the production of new cells or to the production of new individual form from zygote after fertilization from the ovum by a sperm cell. Next is growth. It is an increase in body size and weight. Example, increase in size and number of cells. Next is differentiation. Development process by which unspecialized cells changes into specialized cells. Example, unspecialized precursors stem cells in red bone marrow differentiate into RBC and several types of WBC. Respiration. Processes involved in exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the cell and the external environment. It includes ventilation and diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide and the transport of the gases into the blood. Digestion. Process of breaking down complex ingested food into simple molecules that can be absorbed into the blood and utilized by the body. The last one is excretion, process that removes the waste product of digestion and metabolism from the body. It gets rid of byproducts that the body is unstable, unable to use, many of which are toxic and incompatible with life. Maintenance of life. Life depends upon five environmental factors, which are water, food, oxygen, heat and pressure requirement of organisms water most abundant substance in body required for metabolic processes and required for transport of substances it also regulates body temperature food provide necessary nutrients supply energy supplies raw materials oxygen one fifth of air used to release energy from nutrients. Heat, form of energy, 
partially controlled rate and metabolic reactions. Pressure Application of force of an object Atmospheric pressure Important for breathing Hydrostatic pressure keeps blood flowing. We are going to discuss about homeostasis. Homeostasis that means maintaining of stable internal environment. Homeostasis maintained by the body responses to adverse stimuli, ensuring maintenance of an optimal psychological environment. Homeostatic regulations involves three parts or mechanisms the receptor, the control center, and the effector. The receptor receives information that something in the environment is changing. The control center or integration center receives and processes information from the receptor. And lastly, the effector responds to the command of the control center by either opposing or enhancing the stimulus. This is an ongoing process that continually works to restore and maintain homeostasis. This is the picture shown mechanism of homeostatic control mechanism. There are two mechanisms which controls the homeostasis. When a change of variable occurs, there are two main types of feedback to which the system reacts. The first one is negative feedback mechanism and the second one is positive feedback mechanism. What is negative feedback mechanism? A reaction in which the system responds in such a way as to reverse the direction of change. Since this, this tends to keep things constant, it allows the maintenance of homeostasis. For example, when the concentration of carbon dioxide in the body increases, the lungs are signaled to increase their activity and expel more carbon dioxide. Positive feedback mechanism. A response is to amplify the change in variable. This has a destabilizing effect, so does not result in homeostasis. Positive feedback is less common in naturally occurring systems than negative feedback, but it has its applications. For example, in nerves, a threshold electric potential triggers the generation of a much larger action potential. Blood clotting in which the platelet processes mechanism to transform blood liquid to solidify is an example of positive feedback loop. Another example is the secretion of oxytocin which provides a pathway for uterus to contract leading to childbirth. This is all about human anatomy.